Ghouls have been a prominent feature throughout the Fallout series, and for good reason. Because despite their wretched, decaying appearance, these walking, talking zombies are some of the most intriguing characters found within the wastelands of Fallout, thanks in part to their history of giving out some of the most creepy and memorable Fallout quests, as well as the ability of some of these ghoulified centenarian characters to offer up a rare window to the pre-war Fallout world. And you might even wonder when talking to one of these gangrenous guys or gals, how does one actually become a ghoul? So today we're going to be looking at just that, as we dive into the ghoulification process and explore why being a ghoul might not be as bad as you first thought. But to start with, I just want to highlight that the approach to science in the Fallout games isn't a very accurate one, as you might expect from a game where people willingly drank irradiated cola and aliens obsessed with Giddy Up Buttercup stalked Earth's orbit. When it comes to radiation and its effect on humans, Fallout devs have in the past said that radiation and physics as a whole in the Fallout universe are, quote, based instead on 50s sensibilities and pulp era comics. The Fallout universe is what people in the 50s believed the future would be, with a lot more nuclear warheads dropped on it. As a result, there are endless stretches of desert, radiation will cause giant mutations, Ray guns and brains in jars are realities, and you might trip over a few giant, evil, tentacular blobs with plans on taking over the world. So basically, whereas in our universe a deadly dose of gamma radiation would usually kill a human, in the Fallout universe there's instead a chance that it will trigger the process of ghoulification. And the gamma radiation does this by disrupting the normal process of decay in the neural transmitters along the spinal cord. The subject's body then begins to undergo a more noticeable physical transformation, as their skin becomes damaged by the radiation, begins to thin and flake off, exposing the muscles underneath, whilst connective tissue deteriorates, allowing the nose and ears to fall off. The amount of degradation to a ghoul's appearance does vary, however, based off the manner of their radiation exposure. Ghouls who are exposed to a lower amount of radiation, but over a longer period of time, experience more gradual and slightly less gruesome changes to their appearance. A good example of this would be Captain Zhao from Fallout 4, who was radiated over time by the leaking nuclear reactor in his sunken submarine. If an individual were to receive a large hit of radiation all in one go, due to being close to ground zero of a nuclear blast, the ghoulification process would be more severe looking, with more burns, extensive wounds, and exposed bone. Seen to a degree with Fallout 3's Carol, who was almost vaporized by a direct nuclear blast on Washington DC. Other physical symptoms of ghoulification for most ghouls, no matter their manner of exposure, include necrosis, rot, hair loss, cataracts, glaucoma, and arthritis. The larynx is also usually damaged by the change, giving ghouls a raspy voice. This can vary however, and the voice is usually less raspy towards the beginning of ghoulification. The whole process of turning from a human to a ghoul can take anywhere between a few hours and a year, depending on the individual's level of exposure. Making matters worse for any ghouls who wish to escape to narcotics, all forms of recreational drugs such as Jet or Psycho require double doses to have any effect on a ghoul's altered physiology. So you might now be asking, this all sounds incredibly uncomfortable. Surely nobody on either pre- or post-apocalyptic Earth would willingly submit themselves to ghoulification? And to that I say, that's an incredibly specific question, but yes, some did subject themselves to this process willingly. Eddie Winter, a Boston-based crime boss, and Desmond Lockhart, a British spy, both exposed themselves to controlled, high levels of radiation prior to the falling of atomic bombs during the Great War. Desmond, thanks to his role at the highest levels of international espionage, and Eddie, thanks to the bribing of a US Army intelligence officer, both knew of the upcoming nuclear war and chose to ready themselves for the nuclear fire, so that they could venture forth into the wasteland and continue to pursue their ambitions. Being a ghoul also came with some benefits for any adventurers wishing to make the most out of their prospects in the wasteland, especially in the direct aftermath of the war. To begin with, becoming a rotting, decaying ghoul actually makes you pretty bloody tough, thanks to the ghoulified bodies possessing a certain amount of regenerative ability, allowing a ghoul's body to continue to function relatively unhindered 
regardless of age and immune to most diseases, extending their lifespan indefinitely unless killed through accident or injury. This regenerative ability is, in fact, so strong that if a ghoul's limb were to fall off, which they can casually just do, the ghoul simply needs to pick the limb up and reattach it. The body will then eventually reintegrate the limb and regain functionality. These regeneration abilities are also boosted by greater levels of radiation, meaning ghouls can not only enter highly irradiated areas, but they are actually strengthened when in these areas, as seen with the marked men in the Divide region of the Mojave Wasteland. These ghouls have sustained wounds that would kill most ghouls, being skinned alive by the brutal storms in the area. The high levels of radiation in their new home, however, sustain their bodies and keep them alive, if albeit in incredible pain. Further adding to the survivability of ghouls is their ability to go some time without food and water, their mutated bodies sustaining them via its regenerative properties. When ghouls do seek sustenance, their lack of smell and resilient digestive tract allow them to eat most food they find, even food considered repulsive by most humans. But what about feral ghouls? Are they different to regular ghouls, I hear you ask? Another good question. And yes, feral ghouls have gone through the same process as regular sentient ghouls to become necrotic humans. But for whatever reason, these feral creatures have lost all higher cognitive functions due to their mind, which is not affected by the ghoul's regenerative ability, degrading over time causing them to become increasingly hungry and aggressive cannibals. Potential causes for this regression to a feral state can include initial exposure to an immense amount of radiation, so strong that it fries their brain, which would explain why many feral ghouls themselves store and emit lethal waves of radiation from their body. There is also anecdotal evidence that in some cases, ghouls who are isolated from other sentient beings are more likely to go feral than more sociable ghouls. This is not always the case though, as for example, Billy Peabody was trapped alone without food and water inside a refrigerator for 210 years, and he didn't go feral. Whilst there are also examples of ghouls within social groups going feral despite their lack of isolation. So in all likelihood, feralization of ghouls occurs randomly and could happen to any ghoul due to their mind, unlike the rest of their major bodily functions, being unable to repair itself. Occasionally, ghouls, both feral and sentient, become glowing ones. Luminous green ghouls that emit an incredibly high amount of radiation. A ghoul gains this bioluminescence when its body ceases filtering out radioactive particles from its blood, causing the particles to build up and emit the aforementioned glow. No matter the ghoul, however, whether they be glowing, feral, or otherwise, they are sure to be looked upon with suspicion, or even downright hostility, by the smooth-skinned humans who now populate the wasteland, outnumbering the sterile ghouls. In some areas, usually more deprived areas such as Freeside in the Mojave Wasteland, they are seen almost as equals by the human residents, mutual sufferers in the squalor and poverty of their existence in such places. In other areas, in settlements or groups that see themselves as more civilized, ghouls are faced with extreme prejudice, as seen in how the Tenpenny Tower residents view ghouls, or how the Lions Brotherhood of Steel members in the Capital Wasteland fire indiscriminately on any ghouls that they see. Now this discrimination is pretty horrible for the ghouls to face, especially with all the problems and discomforts already faced by these people. But it's also self-sabotaging for the smooth skins to chase them away. As with a ghoul's centuries of experience comes great learning, making them in general far wiser and more knowledgeable than regular humans. A prime example of this is Jason Bright and his followers, who, seeking to escape the bigotry of humans, are able to repair a number of pre-war spacecraft and take them to the stars, providing the player doesn't deliberately sabotage them, of course. So as a result of the bigotry these ghouls face, they struggle to integrate into human societies, depriving said societies of their experience, and instead the ghouls tend to group together in their own tight-knit communities, such as Underworld and the Vault Settlement of Necropolis. Here, behind their walls, ghouls are safe from persecution, bonded by their shared experience and free to develop their own sense of community and togetherness in a way that the rest of the wasteland cannot replicate. All things considered, it might not actually be that bad being a ghoul. I mean, sure your arm may fall off, 
there's a chance that you could go feral, you face a lot of discrimination, and you stink to high heaven. But it's not like you even had a nose anymore, so why would you care? And whilst the smooth skins hide away in their towns, getting sick from radiation, dirty water, and old age, you've been living it up for centuries, near immortal and surrounded by a close, loving community. So maybe, just maybe, the ghouls are the real winners in the wastelands of Fallout after all. What do you think? Would you willingly submit yourself to the ghoulification process? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to join our Discord via the link below, and subscribe for more lore. Catch you next time.